Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Kara. Today I'm going to be doing my series review for the Dark Angel Trilogy by Meredith Ann Pierce. The first book is called The Dark Angel and I don't own that one. The second book is called A Gathering of Gargoyles. And the third book is called The Pearl of the Soul of the World. So the first part of this review is going to be spoiler free so you can see if it sounds like something that you might like to pick up. So I gave the first book four stars, the second book four stars, probably more like a 3.5 stars, and the third book I gave three stars. In this series we follow our main character Ariel as she seeks to defeat a character known as the White Witch. Along the way she encounters a lot of companions who sort of aid her in her journey and she has to unravel a riddle so that she can figure out how she is meant to save their world from complete destruction. There's a lot of other things that go on but I don't want to give anything away for the first book so that's all I'm going to say about the plot. You know it's a fantasy, sounds pretty standard, but it actually isn't. So first off I'm going to talk about the things that I really enjoyed throughout the series and one of the main ones is that the world building for this entire trilogy is just really incredibly well done, particularly in the first and second book. You definitely get a sense of the geography and the people living there and the customs and even the languages. The writing style also really lent itself well to this kind of story. It's a very old-fashioned sort of feeling like including the dialogue people speak to each other in a way that doesn't really feel like modern English but it doesn't feel overdone. I think that overall it really contributed to the sort of otherworldly setting of the story and I really liked that. This sort of goes along with the world building aspect but I really loved how many different cultures we got to explore throughout the three books. You know again this is not one of those fantasy novels where it's all just sort of vaguely based on Europe, you know? You really get to explore there are areas that feel more reminiscent of the Middle East and then there are some areas that feel like they could be in Europe or other places and I just really liked the variety we got there. Another big plus is that I really enjoyed Ariel as our main character. She was a really interesting one to follow because she starts off really unsure of herself and kind of, I guess you could say, weak and by the end of it she's really come into her own and sort of come to terms with her own worth and skills and it's just really exciting to follow her and I also just loved how her kindness and her determination to do the right thing were never really hindrances in her quest. You know I love anti-heroes but it's really nice to once in a while get a character who is rewarded for showing mercy. And then one of the biggest things about this trilogy is that it was so incredibly original. I don't really remember reading another book that reminded me of this one and that's pretty impressive. So I feel like the plot itself, even aside from all of the writing and character aspects, I feel like that interesting plot alone at least makes it worth picking up the first book. There were a few things that I didn't enjoy very much. Number one is more of a personal complaint. I feel like there were a lot of sections of just long traveling on this quest. And that kind of makes sense, you know, because you can't just get from point A to point B instantly. But I feel like it was kind of overdone. And I also got really frustrated because although we do get some really interesting side characters, I feel like it's hard to really get attached to them or it's annoying to get attached to them because as soon as you get invested in another character like they're gone they're off in some other part of the world and doing their own thing to help defeat the witch and you just don't hear about them for like 200 pages so that got kind of frustrating even though i do enjoy ariel i really like some of her allies and they just sort of pop up and disappear at random and then finally the biggest issue i had with these books is the ending of the trilogy and how the third book, although it had some good points, left me completely frustrated and dissatisfied and I'm just really not happy about it so that is something to consider. So overall I would definitely recommend the first book. I think the second book could still be worth reading especially if you really enjoy like the world building aspects and then as far as the third book goes I feel like it might not be worth it. You can you know, you can read other reviews and see what people say on Goodreads, but I'm not really glad I read it. I feel like the first book could actually be read as a standalone if you wanted to do that. 
So that is all for the non-spoiler section. I hope this kind of helped you decide if you wanted to maybe pick up this trilogy or maybe just the first book. I'm going to be getting into more spoilery thoughts in a minute, so if you've already read the series, or if you have no intention of reading these books and you just want to see why I'm so pissed off about the ending, then please stick around and we'll get into it. Okay, so spoiler time. <laughs> I had read a lot of reviews of this trilogy overall, and especially the last book, and I thought I was prepared for how frustrated the ending was going to leave me. And I was not. I did not anticipate being so angry when I finished this book. And I, I like just finished reading it. And as soon as I did, I wanted to throw my book at a wall. So in case you did stick around and you haven't actually read the book, you just want to hear the spoilers, very briefly, the ending is Ariel defeats the White Witch and her and Irilath sort of declare their love for each other, finally, after three whole books, basically. They, I think they sleep together once, and then Ariel finds out that she actually is responsible for single-handedly pulling their world back together with the Ravenna's magic. This, like, sort of goddess, but not really. Pulling it back together with her magic. And Ariel is the only person who can do this, and if she doesn't, she dooms their world to eventual extinction within a few generations. So here's the thing about that whole like quest that Ariel is kind of forced on at the end of the book. I would not have minded if she had made the decision that the world is more important than her relationship with this one person. Because it is! I would not have minded that. Except it feels like Ariel is backed into this corner where the only option she has is what the Ravenna wants her to do. And it also just bugged me. Like, this quest just feels very vaguely defined. Like, this whole pulling the magic back together and keeping the world running. Like, it's so vague. And also, how long is that actually going to take? Like, has Ariel just been doomed to an eternity alone of just keeping the gears of their world turning? Is that what she's going to be doing for the rest of her existence? Is she immortal now? Like, nothing was explained about it. We're just told that this is Ariel's life now, and if she doesn't do it, she's awful and selfish and everyone will die. Like, and that just seems really harsh that she can't have anybody distracting her whatsoever. Like, thank God that Aaron came along with her, because otherwise it just seems like the worst resolution to this journey Ariel has gone on. By the way, I definitely think Aaron is in love with her. Did anybody else pick up on that? I feel like for sure Aaron likes Ariel as more than like gal pals or whatever. Like she's definitely in love with her, right? I thought that was going to come up, but it never did. And then that's another problem. If Aaron can go with Ariel while she does this really difficult magic quest thing, if Aaron can come with her, why can't Eerie laugh? Like, how, how distracting is a person going to be, really, if you've basically got the powers of the goddess? I mean, okay, I know that Irilath is like the prince of Averick or whatever, like he has responsibilities, but if it's so important to them to like stay together or to spend time together, I feel like there would have been a way to sort of work out a compromise. Like, I don't know, is Ariel going to be just constantly like, consumed with this one thing for the rest of her life? Like, is she basically just out of commission? And another thing that pissed me off is that Ravenna is such a hypocrite. <laughs> because she tells Ariel that she has this great responsibility that means she has to leave the person she loves forever. She tells Ariel this, and Ariel is understandably not that thrilled about it, and she tries to argue with her, like, no, we just found each other, you know, he, like, he loves me and I didn't know he did and all of this. Like, Ariel's really upset and Ravenna says something to her that's like, oh, but he is just one man and you must save the world. And it's like, Ravenna, you did the exact same thing when it was your daughter. Like, when we're talking about the White Witch and, like, redeeming her, Ariel even confirms with her that Ravenna was willing to let Ariel and her entire army, like basically every character we've met throughout the entire trilogy, Ravenna was willing to let them all die if it meant that she could save her daughter. Like if there was a chance for redeeming the White Witch, Orion Kor, whatever her name is. 
Like, that's the exact same issue. And that's another thing where I would have understood placing the needs of an entire world above one person. Like, that's valid and that makes sense and I approve of that. Except that Ravenna totally does, doesn't do that until it's something that doesn't affect her personally in any way. There were a couple of things I liked about the ending, like I really enjoyed getting to see all of the lawns, the, like the animal sort of guardians from the different kingdoms. I really liked getting to see that more, even though it wasn't for very long. And I thought the battle scene itself was kind of interesting. I'll tell you what I loved was Irilath not being at all tempted by the White Witch. Like he was just, he was just not having it. And that was a really refreshing, I think, change because I kept expecting that to be an issue later. I just feel like overall Irilath was like such a more interesting character in this last book so it really bums me out that he kind of gets just screwed over by everyone. I also really enjoyed the part where Irilath just completely refuses to marry Saber. Is that her name? Saber? He completely refuses to marry her like ever at any point in the future. <laughs> I, like, I was very vindictively pleased by that because I did not like Saber at all. I feel like she was sort of just introduced to, like, put a barrier between Ariel and Irilath as if they needed another one. I feel like that was the only purpose she served. I mean, I guess she showed up and helped with her army, but really the only interactions she has with other characters are her trying to, like, home wreck. I mean... I don't know, you guys. I guess... I guess I give Meredith Ann Pierce, like, points for originality for the ending. It was just... it was so frustrating because I feel like no matter what you were hoping for as, like, the resolution of the arc, of the story's arc, no matter what you were hoping for, you're going to be disappointed. Like, if you wanted a happy ending, you really don't get that. <laughs> if you wanted like something more brutal I feel like you'd be disappointed too because like none of the good guys really die like the stakes don't feel as high until like after the big battle is over and Ariel just has like the worst deal handed to her out of anyone I feel like it was supposed to feel bittersweet but it really just felt bitter like I didn't find anything really redeeming about it like Ariel's basically She's basically under the power of Ravenna, like Irilath was under the power of the White Witch. Like, Irilath even asks her that, and Ariel has this moment of realization like, Oh, I guess that's true. I think I need to stop now before I just make myself more upset, but as you can probably tell, I did not really enjoy the ending of this series and I'm pretty disappointed because I did really like the first two books and I was hoping for I was hoping for a strong finish and I didn't really get that so you guys should let me know down below if you've read this series what you thought of it or if you haven't read it are you gonna pick it up <laughs> I don't know did this review like convince you to, to maybe give the first book a chance or to avoid the whole situation like the plague. I'd be really curious to know. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. I will see you guys soon with another one, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!